Hello and welcome to the Q&A for October. Um, Q&A slash news update, I guess, because that's what these videos are sort of now evolving into. But yes, uh, it's, it's a bit late. It's nearly the end of October and I had planned for this to be out in the middle of October, but many things got in the way, unfortunately, but it's here now. Um, so what we'll do first is we'll run through the questions uh, from the wonderful folks over on Patreon first. We'll then go through some of the questions from the YouTube Q&A video comment from the last Q&A video. So I pick some comments each time to answer in the following video. And then we're going to go through some general channel news and updates and do some explanations on what's been going on. So let's uh, let's get stuck into it. So <clears throat> that help if I scrolled up to the top of the Word document. So Jack Kiwi Bricks asks, um, would you ever cons cover aerial engagements slash battles from the likes of the First World War up to modern times. Would love to see your take on the Battle of Midway or the Battle of Britain, or even more modern aerial engagements like those during Desert Storm and the Gulf War. Yes, um, I have plans in place to cover a multiplicity of these aerial engagements, battles, campaigns. Some are arriving sooner rather than later. Some I really want to do haven't even entered into the planning phase yet just because I've got such a backlog of things I want to do. Um, that is becoming a trend now is the fact that I, there are so many things I want to cover and I don't really have a realistic time frame to cover everything so it's getting to the point where I might have to start prioritizing certain stuff but definitely things um, like the Battle of Britain and the Battle of Midway are definitely going to be a sooner rather than later thing. Um, I, I will say out of all the major aerial battles, um, some of the ones from the First World War I've done quite a bit of research on because I'm planning on redoing my um, World War One in the Air video series that is currently on almost permanent hiatus. I, I did those scripts years ago before this channel was even a real thing and um, I'm redoing them now. So the aerial battles of World War One will be one of the first things I'm doing, then probably the Battle of Britain and then the Battle of Midway, because that really fascinates me. That These are taking a while for two reasons. One, the, the research and getting all the facts right is a huge undertaking. Two, I want to make them easy to follow for those who aren't familiar with certain things. So I want to add a... I want to add some illustrations and some maps and things like that into the video, which obviously involves learning how to use geo layers with Adobe After Effects and all that fun stuff. Now, with a lot of my videos, I tend to, I, I prefer to produce them as if it's almost a podcast. So you can, you can understand the video without having to see what is actually being presented. But for these ones, I'm also going to add maps and things like that. So that people who are actually watching the screen get some extra information along with what I'm actually talking about. So those battles will be coming. I just don't really have a time frame for them yet, but it definitely won't be this year. It's probably going to be probably mid mid next year or early next year depending on how quickly I can get the researching and the planning and the editing done but they are coming. Uh, Psycho Flight asks do you plan to do biographical stories about developers or owners? Yes, um, the same caveat as with the aerial battles it's a question of timing and planning. I, um, I've had some really good feedback on the videos that I've done so far about the early development of aircraft, like with Hawker, uh, Blackburn, and Supermarine. I had really good feedback on that, and I had a, quite a few comments asking, you know, a bit, bit more detail about the actual developers and the people behind those companies. So that's definitely something I'm going to be doing in the future. I'm just tossing up whether to do them as individual videos, or whether I maybe did, like, a, a long video on a certain topic, say like a one hour or a 90 minute video that covers the pioneering developers of say Great Britain, and then another one for France, one for Germany, one for the USA, et cetera, et cetera, on like a per country basis rather than a per company basis, just to make things a bit more manageable in terms of workload. But again, that is a, that is a future me problem, though I have already, um, you can't see in my wardrobe, but I've got like a whole stack of notebooks of basically ideas and plans. There is one dedicated to developers in there. So that is uh, that is on the cards, most assuredly. And um, Kevin asks, is there a limit on how modern you intend to go? For example, do you intend on covering aircraft still in service, cutting edge planes like the F-35? I may cover stuff that is currently in service. My cutoff at the moment has basically been anything Anything that is mostly out of service is something that I cover. Um, 
things that are still things that are still in limited service um aircraft that were developed say during the mid cold war are definitely still things i plan to cover but for the foreseeable future i'm mostly going to be sticking between you know 1914 to about 1960 ish and once i've gotten the majority of those out of the way which honestly is a huge undertaking <laughs> on itself um i'll look at doing modern things if if that takes longer than i think it is i might change up the video schedule maybe dedicate a couple of videos uh maybe a week um a month to videos where i cover newer stuff then the rest of the month it's more of the traditional content you currently send on the channel so that is a consideration that I still need to iron out, but it's I'm not ruling out covering things like the F-35, it's just not on my current plans at the moment. Uh, now, Green Sea Ships asks, um, we've all seen the little plexi bubbles in the noses of bombers like the B-17s and B-24s for the navigators, um, for use by sextants and optics, etc. These bombers were of course primarily daytime bombers, so did the navigators ever use the equipment on missions to the continent, or did they only ever use them when crossing the Atlantic? They were definitely used. Um, the, these bubbles were used on the many aircraft that had them, British, American, etc. But it, it was more of a secondary use rather than a primary when it came to them actually being used in the field. Many bombers were indeed used in daylight raids, but a good number were also used at night, either for nighttime bombing, maritime patrol work, or other more specialised tasks, um, such as uh, target marking, things like that, submarine hunting, etc. For this, the main tools of navigation were essentially the same as those used during the day, which made nighttime navigation a bit of a challenge, particularly in the early years, where not as much attention had been put into the training of navigation during the interwar years as what could have been done. Quite a few countries grew quite complacent, particularly the US Army Air Corps were very, I wouldn't say behind, but they, they weren't putting as much effort into navigational training as they could have, and that extends into the development of navigational technology. Now, a lot of the tools used for navigation during the Second World War was the same traditional method that had been used thus far. Maps, compass, sextant, dead reckoning, etc. Usually, um, when navigating to a bomb target, they would not make a direct straight line for the target. They would aim either to the left or to the right, so that when they got near the target, they could look out the window and roughly know where the target was going to be, because even with the best navigation in the world at that time, there was still going to be some margin of error. This was particularly true when using the bubbles and the sextants, or the octants, depending on what they had. These celestial navigation was used, but its effectiveness was dictated by the weather. You not only had to see the stars, and obviously clouds had opinions about whether or not you could do that, but you also had to provide a smooth flight for the navigator to get even remotely accurate readings. Turbulence was a big problem, you know, a lot of these bomber formations were flying through the layers of the atmosphere where turbulence was still a considerable issue, again, particularly in the early war years, and if you were in a bumpy patch of sky, um, using a, a sextant was not only problematic, it was also dangerous. Um, you could you could risk poking your eye out, you could, you, you know, navigators did get injured, quite severely injured. Some some navigators lost eyes in, um, in bashing up against the equipment, and obviously, you know, rubber and things like that was used, but turbulence can get really bad. So um, it was it was limited by the weather. So yes, the navigation bubbles were used, not just for crossing large bodies of water like the Atlantic, they were used in general, but their effectiveness as a navigation tool was mixed. Um, Captain Capitano Lorenzo, sorry, have you asks, have you considered doing a couple of videos about Australian designed and built aircraft during World War II? Definitely. Those are, those are definitely a sooner rather than later thing. Um, a few commenters have noted a distinct absence in Australian aircraft on the channel. There is a good reason for that. Um, I live in Australia and I want to do video, videos on these aircraft where I'm talking about them at least partially in person. So I've been speaking with people working at certain museums and making contacts and uh, gathering my research and getting everything done first. Because... Um, Australian museums tend to be a bit smaller than museums you get overseas, 
However, because it is Australia, they do have an abundance of Australian built aircraft. So my plan is to definitely cover those aircraft, but I'm going to try and do it in person so I can sit in the cockpits, talk about the machinery and actually give you guys a, a visual tour of the aircraft itself, particularly things like the Wiraway and the Boomerang. So that's definitely coming. Again, that'll be a, a next year thing. I, I would start doing it now, but we're coming into summer and we're coming into storm season. And a lot, of the, a lot of the museums that I go to, and that are at least within driving distance to me, are up here in either subtropical or in tropical Queensland. And um, doing this kind of filming with the risk of like a rain squall isn't exactly ideal. So I'm going to aim for doing it in the cooler, drier winter months next year. But those videos, again, are coming. There's just going to be a bit, bit of a delay. I don't want to have to fly or drive several hundred kilometers, if not more than a thousand kilometers, only to have it spoiled by the weather. That is a legitimate concern here. But yes, um, Australian aircraft, definitely coming. Uh, the same for stuff developed by New Zealand and um, all of that as well. So stay tuned for that. Um, now, Minion asks, would you consider doing any episodes about Czech and or Rush Romanian aircraft industries? Yes, so a lot of the um, lesser known European aircraft manufacturers and industries are coming. The issue is translation. So I do have a lot of source material for Polish aircraft, Czech, Romanian, Hungarian, fin Finnish, the lot. A lot of the source material has not been translated into English, so I'm having to go through the process of um, going through professional translators or hand translating them myself, which of course takes time. I found a couple of good translators um, for the Polish and Romanian source material that I have, but they have... it's it's a, it's a niche requirement, I guess, and there's a bit of a backlog on when I can actually get my stuff translated. Um, some, some sources I'm expecting to have fully done before Christmas, some are going to be well into next year, because some of the source material I have is um, large, like we're talking three, four, five hundred page books. So again, th those are coming, it's just a question of timing and logistics, and as I said at the start of this video, this is becoming a running theme. My, my videos are not being limited by my, by my capacity to read and speak, because my, my health is quite a bit better now. It, it's more the logistics behind actually running the channel, getting the source material done, translating stuff, scripting stuff, recording, and then editing. It's it's a mountain of work, and um, a, a lot of it involves me bashing my head against the desk going, why doesn't this translate properly? Because I'm not a professional translator, I need one. Um, now, matching user, um, this is from the... Hang on, was Minion? Yeah, okay, so that was the last of the Patreon comments for this month. And now I've got a couple taken over from the last YouTube Q&A video that went up, which is the same thing that Patreon sees anyway. Um, so Tin Man Enterprises asks, would you consider taking commissioned work on specific aircraft um, and that way you have like viewers sponsoring a video? At the moment, no, purely because my backlog is so enormous um, that I'm having to prioritize things on an ad hoc basis. As in, I'm prioritizing videos based on how easily and readily I can produce them, based on how easily and readily I can research them and get other things done like video editing, um, 3D models, which are now coming into play as well. It's a brilliant suggestion and one I'm definitely going to table for the future. But at the moment, it's something that I can't really do just because at, at the moment, I don't know what videos are going to be in like a month from now because it all depends on, on, on how stuff moves through the pipeline. At the moment, I've got got a little notice thing here. I've got nine videos in the works at the moment and their completion status changes every given week depending on what progress I'm making. So doing doing commissions at the moment is a bit difficult but it's definitely something I'll consider in the future. Uh, matching user asks, do you plan on learning aircraft modeling? Um, I would like to. I used to I used to do modeling in the form of Warhammer years and years ago. It's more of a question of space, time, and, and that's about it. I just don't have much space or much time. 3D modeling, I'm really getting into and learning how to do. So that's probably where my passion for that will lie. Mostly because it's technically cheaper, although th certain 3D programs are very expensive, but I use Blender, which is free. But the important thing is it's all stored on the computer, so I don't need to worry about models taking up space. I do miss the 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 fun of building something by hand but with w doing the channel as a full-time job it, it consumes a lot of my free time as it is 
So when it comes to modeling, I'm probably going to stick to 3D modeling as that's going to contribute to what I'm putting up online. And the last question for this month's video, uh, Rum Ranch 18 asks, would you do a video or videos on helicopters? Yes, helicopters, gyrocopters, rotary craft are a planned thing. I will be expanding into those potentially even before Christmas. Um, I've had a lot of requests for that. Again, not meaning to sound like a broken record, it's just a question of logistics and getting stuff planned. Um, I, I had originally planned to introduce helicopters and rotary craft earlier, but then my to-do list for regular aircraft grew exponentially from about a list of 50 to my requested aircraft list alone is over 400. I then have a helicopter request list, which is at nearly, well, rotary craft request list, which is at nearly 100. And I also have an aerospace request list as well for um, rocketry and stuff, which I'm probably actually going to stick on a second channel at some point just to keep it a little bit separate. But I also have that list as well, which is well in excess of 100 already. So I, that that's enough video topics to cover me for about five if not six years at this point. So I'm not going to be out of a job at any point. But um, yes, the, the helicopters are coming. Again, it's it's a question of when, not if. It, it is a it is a guarantee. Timing, I, I honestly couldn't say right now. But um, there are definitely quite a few I plan to cover. Going back to the original founding ones, all the way up to some of the really crazy, kooky things we saw during the Second World War and the Cold War. And I'm really looking forward to covering those in the unforeseen future. But yes, so that's the questions out of the way, the Q&A section. Um, the the Q&A section will, will get bigger as time goes on, probably. Um, but at the moment, I'm just limiting it to a certain amount. I'm doing all the questions asked on Patreon, and then I'm taking a certain amount from YouTube as well. As both grow, hopefully, in the future, That this section might get longer, or I might trim it to keep it to roughly half an hour or C. But now, we'll go through to the general updates. Uh, so first thing, um, a lot of people have been asking about my health, is everything okay? A lot of people sending well wishes with the COVID and all of that, and I just want to say a massive thank you to all of the kind comments and messages, both on Discord, Patreon, and on YouTube. It's It's been really nice, really supportive. Um, at the moment, everything seems to be good. There have been some concerns with my heart, unfortunately, and it seems like that it may be an underlying condition that COVID has exacerbated still getting tests and stuff done, but I have been assured by my doctors that at the moment it's nothing serious or life-threatening, otherwise I'd be in a hospital, um, but it's something that they need to do more checks and monitoring on in the future, but at the moment it's not affecting my health, I'm able to exercise, still go to the gym and things like that, but it, it has been something that's kept me busy getting tests and stuff done recently, and um, like the past month my cough has finally gone away, courtesy of the hot disgusting humid Queensland weather that is lurking outside my window but apparently my lungs like the heat so that's back to normal at least but um that's why I've been a bit quiet this month because I had to go and see some doctors and get some tests done which was a little bit alarming at the start but now that they've reassured me that everything is fine I'm a bit less stressed out about it but that that's essentially what's going on but thank you all so much for all the wonderful comments and support it, it really meant a lot and uh it's it's very heartwarming to see um so next is the the other thing I want to talk about is the 3D modeling. Now you guys would have seen a bit of that in the recent Curtis XP55 video where there, I had some renderings of the aircraft um, like and some background stuff like I had another aircraft model and a hangar in there. Now the aircraft models I didn't make, um, in fact barely any of the things you saw on the screen weren't made by me except the, the background scenery with the trees and the hills and stuff, I did that. The aircraft were built by a couple of different modelers over on CG Trader who do amazing work. Um, one of them I'm working with now to get specific models made sort of on a commission basis. So hopefully it means we're going to get some really weird and cool aircraft that don't have a lot of photos um, appearing on the channel because I can now share it with a 3D model. I'm working on my animating skills, um, so I'm outsourcing the model so I can actually do the animation myself because doing modeling and animating was starting to take up so much of my time that I realized it would limit me to maybe a video uh, fortnight, if not less, which for me is unacceptable. I want to do at least four videos a month 
at the moment I'm maintaining about seven or eight videos a month, which has been great. But um, if I do less than a four videos a month, I, I, I won't be happy with that just because I have so many things I want to talk about. I have to maintain a, uh, I, I wouldn't say a level of quantity over quality, but there is a part of that. You know, I, I don't have forever to obviously get everything done. Um, and, you know, who knows, YouTube might not exist one day. So and I'd like to at least get all of this out into the world for people to see and learn. Because that, that is why I started the channel, was to teach people about these weird aircraft. And, and a lot of which have been forgotten, which is sad, but I'm a plain nerd and I find it oddly fascinating, hence why I talk about it. But the 3D modelling is going to be an asset um, that I'm going to use in the future, particularly for lesser known aircraft, but also for the more popular and more common aircraft as well, just so that it adds a bit of extra zing to the videos, I guess. But as I said in the previous Q&A, it's not going to be a dominating feature, it's just going to be an auxiliary feature that adds to the video rather than dominating it. So that that is that is something that's coming more. There is going to be there is going to be animated aircraft flying around and stuff, not just the static display. Um, I hope you guys liked the little hangar shots that I did. Now it's literally a virtual Rex's hangar, um, which is which is really cool. I I had that model model made up for me by a couple of modelers online, and they're building a couple of other different hangar models as well, which we'll see in the future. So yeah. That's going to be a, a future thing moving forward. Not all videos at the moment are going to have these 3D models purely for the sake of time. I'm still learning how to get all of this done quickly. And I'm still perfecting my um, workflow and how I get things rendered on the workstation. The, the thing that takes the most amount of time is rendering. Um, obviously, because you've got to render every frame. And um, depending on the quality of the render, that can be anything from... 30 seconds per frame to maybe 10 or something minutes per frame, which is a lot of time when you're rendering at 30 or 60 frames a second. So, yeah, th th there'll be more of that. And big news, which I also announced in the XP55 video during the Squarespace um, uh, sponsorship bit, was is I'm doing some overseas trips next year. I'm going to be going to, at the moment, the UK and the United States for two major air shows. I'm going to be going to the Royal International Air Tattoo in the UK, which is in July. And I'm going to be going to Oshkosh for a couple of weeks later, which is also in July as well. So July is going to be a really busy month for me. Um, I haven't nailed down exact dates yet. Um, the, the plan is I'm probably going to spend more time in the UK than in America because I've got family and friends over there. So I'm going over there not just for planes, but also just as a personal holiday for myself and my partner. She's never been to England. I want to show her around all the pretty sites and castles and everything because we love that sort of stuff. But I'm definitely going to be going to the air tattoo. Um, I've, I've not been in... I don't, I don't know if I ever went to the air tattoo when I was growing up in the UK. It was a very long time ago, but it's, it's been on my bucket list for years and years and years, which is why I'm going this year, because I can now get there affordably, thankfully. And the same goes for Oshkosh. Oshkosh has been on my bucket list for many years, and um, I, I could have gone this year, um, but the, the cost of last minute flights was just astronomically steep. So I thought, no, no, let's let's put it off to 2023 so I can plan it, get accommodation sorted and all of that as well. And um, I'll probably be in the States for about a fortnight, so I might be able to get some uh, medium distance traveling done to some other places, but I can't confirm or guarantee anything yet. Everything's still up in the air. I haven't even booked flights yet. That's probably going to be something that I do next month, maybe in December, but I'm not going to leave it too late. But I'm going to be overseas next year on those two air show trips. I might also be going over to America again in November for Wings over Dallas. That's a slightly more nebulous, maybe, but if I can get over there, if I've got the funds to, I will. Um, which which is why I've been doing the the sponsored the sponsored videos so I can cover these additional expenses on the channel without breaking the bank in doing so because I am currently trying to actually save for a house so I have somewhere to live instead of just a room, which would be nice. And it means that instead of having a storage locker for all of my books, I actually have a library. Storage lockers aren't particularly good for books um, in humid conditions, so my, my, yeah, I don't really want to have mold issues, because that, that has been a concern recently. So, but hopefully I can get to Wings Over Dallas as well as Oshkosh and the um, International Air Tattoo 
If not, Wings Over Dallas will be a 2024 thing instead. You know, whatever I can't do one year, I'll push it into the next year as a priority. Um, the, the plans for those, I'll try and do some filming to get some videos uploaded on YouTube. I'm also going to try and do some live streams whilst I'm at certain air shows, do some meet and greets. I'm trying to link up with a couple of other um, aviation and history content creators as well, hopefully, just to catch up and maybe do some collaborative stuff whilst I'm over there as well. No, nothing's confirmed yet. It's all hypothetical, but we're, we're working some things out behind the scenes. So hopefully there'll be some more information on that probably in the new year but I just thought I'd announce it now that yes I'm going to be doing some traveling next year and hopefully that means we'll get some really cool um, air show footage and maybe some content from inside some of the bigger museums in the UK and in the United States so fingers crossed for that and the last thing on today's uh list of things before I ramble on for far too long as as you guys probably know by now I'm not the best live speaker um I, t I just tend to go off on random tangents far too long but the final point today is the channel is almost at a hundred thousand subscribers and in fact it may even hit that number by the time this video goes up on youtube because it goes on patreon first obviously um as one of the benefits for being on patreon but it's almost at a hundred thousand i think it's at like ninety nine thousand seven hundred at the moment um I started this channel a year ago. That is absolutely amazing and insane, and I, I cannot get over how big of a number that is. A hundred thousand people's huge. Like I, I when I started this channel, I expected it to be interesting for some people. I expected maybe in the first year, oh, you know, I might get five or maybe, you know, I thought, you know, it would be amazing if I got ten thousand subscribers in a year. I wasn't expecting to get ten times that number in a year, let alone anything near it so for it to be at this already is just absolutely amazing it's 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 great to see i'm blown away with the support for the channel it's great to see so many people from all over the world be as enthusiastic on this stuff as i am and from a personal perspective it's been a completely life-changing thing for me like i've never had success like personally in in my life before i've always kind of just potted around doing stuff and never really been good at any specific thing and to have this blow up and become my full-time job and potentially open doors into careers in aviation and things like that is just absolutely amazing and you, you have all been absolutely wonderful and i i cannot ex begin to express in words how much the support i've had this year has been so thank you all so much and with that, I will end today's hangar debrief slash Q&A video before I ramble on anymore. And I will see you all next month. Goodbye.